I get my own flashy little memory messer up or thing when you grow up? Hey everyone, welcome to Too Old for Comics. I'm Steve. Today we're going to do a short episode on a movie that just dropped this past weekend, Men in Black International. Men in Black International is the fourth installation in this uh, movie franchise, originally started by uh, Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones, that had a uh, massive success uh, back in 97 and spawned two sequels. And uh, they were both pretty good, pretty solid movies. This one is sort of a, a reboot or a rebranding of sorts. It stars uh, now megastar Chris Hemsworth of Thor fame and Tessa Thompson, who is also in Thor, uh, Ragnarok, uh, plays Valkyrie. And they're kind of um, putting a, a, a new relaunch, a new rebranding on the franchise and dusting it off and getting ready for a brand new trilogy of movies, I guess. At least I think that's probably what Sony was hoping for. Uh, it opened up. Um, to much anticipation and kind of uh, fell flat, I guess, with the audience. Didn't do too well with the numbers. And it's a shame, really, because, I mean, this is a really good franchise, a franchise that holds a lot of potential, uh, certainly resonated with a lot of audiences um, uh, back in the 90s and the early 2000s. Um, I don't know how much it had to do with Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. I mean, it must have had something to do with them because they're two, uh, two really good actors, two successful actors who have uh, made quite a name for themselves in Hollywood. Chris Hemsworth also, uh, quite a big name in Hollywood, um, very likable, very charismatic, Aussie actor. Uh, Tessa Thompson, up-and-coming actress, uh, I really enjoyed her in Thor. I haven't really seen her much, but uh, she, she, looks, she looked pretty good in this movie also. I uh, was pretty excited to get a female uh, Men in Black in the uh, starring role. But so far with the uh, box office numbers, it uh, doesn't seem to be hitting home with a lot of the audience. But anyway, I digress. I mean, uh, the movie didn't flop, didn't bomb, but it didn't really uh, meet expectations as far as uh, uh, Sony goes, I guess. Now, some of you nerds may be, uh, <laughs> this is a Marvel property. How could it possibly uh, fail? You put a, a Marvel logo in front of any movie and it's a guaranteed hit. Well, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but the main thing I want to talk about is um, the Men in Black franchise as a whole and how to keep it going and what steps... Maybe you should take in order to kind of like keep it flourishing rather than let it wither on the vine and die. So I guess at first we'll um, address the elephant in the room um, about this being a Marvel comic. Uh, Men in Black, while technically now, yeah, I guess it's a Marvel comic. Um, it's not a Marvel comic proper. The The original was um, created by um, by some guy and it was um, its own like independent comic and was then... Um, Transitioned to Malibu, what became Malibu Comics in the early, early 90s. Um, Malibu was then purchased by Marvel because they wanted their uh, color printers, I guess. So Marvel um, doesn't own uh, Men in Black. Uh, the rights to Men in Black, uh, is, you know, the only way they own it is in the same way they own, like, the Ultraverse or, like, Zen the Intergalactic Ninja. So I don't think you'll be seeing uh, those characters in Phase 4, and I don't think you'll be seeing Men in Black in the... Uh, in a Marvel presents Marvel Studios presents movie either. So uh, while granted, you know, back in ninety seven, ninety eight, they did uh, publish some comics, uh, you know, to coincide with the movie. They don't own the original uh, Men in Black uh, comic, really. Now the other thing, as to kind of coincide with the comic book, um, I'm not going to be one of those uh, like you know Simpsons comic book nerds or like those Ninja Turtle fans who say like you know just make it like the original comic, make it like the original comic. Um, I have have a different spin on it. Instead of uh, making it like the comic, I'm gonna say something completely uh, different and and say, why don't you just make it a little bit like the comic? But Steve, you say, you you just said don't make it like the comic. What are you talking about? L let me explain myself a little bit. Uh, and and what, when, while explaining myself, I'm gonna have to kind of um, do a little uh, uh, comparison between what the movies did, what the movies took from the comics, and what they uh, they kept from the comics. Um, Basically, in the well, the, the most I mean obvious things were obviously the characters J and K. Um, J, uh, who played by Will Smith in the movies, uh, the obvious difference is in, in um, the comics he's a uh, blonde-haired white guy. Um, in the in the comics, um, well, in the movies anyway, Will Smith was uh, an LA cop who tracked down an alien, and uh, Agent K saw this and recruited him and kind of gave him a chance to join the Men in Black. And offer him this take on like, like offer him this opportunity to like you know make a difference in the world in ways he never knew or, or in the world would never know he did but like you know whatever um, in the comics though um, Agent J is a um, an ex DEA agent who was basically abducted by the Men in Black who was kind of forced to do uh, become an agent against his will 
Um, he's trained and like, you know, basically this is your job, like it or not. Um, that's kind of the main difference between uh, Jay in the comics and Jay in the movie. Uh, Kay, um, physically and like, you know, appearance-wise, there's not much difference. Um, he's kind of like, this, he comes off as this gruff, well, Tommy Lee Jones is like this gruff uh, seasoned pro who's like, you know, seems like a tough guy, seems like a prick, but has like this like, you know, gooey nougat uh, center to his hard chocolate exterior. Uh, in the comics, though, he's um, he's, he's a little bit different. In the comics, he's kind of like this, um, this this piece of shit human being who who doesn't really care about human life whatsoever. He wouldn't think twice about blowing somebody's head off. There's no uh, gooey center to him at all. He's just like this hardened, uh, on borderline uh, psychopath in, in, in the comics, where he 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 gets off on like you know killing aliens and what have you. Um, it's almost to the point where he seems like he wouldn't have a problem with the. Uh, like, you know, killing Jay if he came out of line. So, I mean, basically, it, like, you know, and, and as far as how the movie goes and the comics, uh, the things they really they kept from the comics were, uh, you know, obviously the name Men in Black, obviously the suits, um, the fact that they hunted on aliens and uh, the Neuralizer. And that's pretty much it, really. Um, Character-wise, story-wise, it was a little bit different in the comics. The comics were a little more offbeat. Um, some scenes were taken from the comic, like, um, the, the Edgar, the, uh, roached alien that came down to the planet in the movies, who, uh, like, you know, wore, like, you know, skinned the farmer and, like, in, in, uh, uh, decided wearing was an Edgar suit. Uh, that was, um, that was kind of from the comics. In, in the comics, what happened was he landed, and, um, basically that roach alien was on a scavenger hunt, and, uh, an alien scavenger hunt, and wasn't really, like, you know looking to take over the world or find the universe. Um, he basically, that's that scene where the farmer says like, you know, you'll take my gun, uh, when you can pry it from my cold dead hands. And, uh, the gun was actually something the alien needed for a scavenger hunt. So he kind of like, you know, took it literally. And, um, he ended up just like coming, like, you know, staying in the hole. And every day he would, he would see if the farmer was dead because like his race took things very literally. So he would wait for like his hands to be dead and cold before he took the, the, uh, the um, the gun um, the resolution wasn't how it was in the movie where there was this big like, epic fight in the uh, in the fair with uh, Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones uh, Agent J ended up just basically just giving him a gun that was from like someone's uh, like from a dead person so it played out a little bit differently than it did in the movie versus the uh, comic book another big difference between the uh, comic book and the uh, in the movie was um, the Men in Black weren't just beholden to fighting aliens, trafficking aliens, and policing aliens. Um, what they, they handle basically all supernatural or inhuman type of problems. Like in the first, um, in fact, in the comics, the uh, Men in Black didn't even fight um, or find an alien until like the end of the second or maybe the third issue. Uh, the first um, storyline, they were actually chasing after a demon and uh, also some kind of virus, uh, some kind of plague virus. So uh, aliens didn't really even come into play until uh, the, uh, the, I think, the, you know, the second storyline, I think. So that being said, what I would do with Men in Black, um, is, and that's is the same thing I would do with a lot of uh, movie franchises like Alien and Predator and um, some other ones, is I wouldn't even continue with the feature film uh, format as far as releasing movies in the theater. I would go kind of like the Disney Plus or the Netflix route and kind of take these franchises and make um, serialized um, shows, um, but put, like, you know, movie budget money into it. Like, you know, Disney Plus saying they're putting, like, something like $200 million into, like, episodes of, like, WandaVision. I would do the same thing with Men in Black. Um, and e honestly, with that type of show, you wouldn't even need that big of a budget. You'd kind of need, like, maybe, like, you know, at least half that, I would think. I don't know. I'm working in Hollywood. And also, given the fact that the Men in Black wouldn't just be fighting aliens in the show, I would kind of go the route of the comic where, like, you know, they would also, like, um, like hunt demons, investigate in cases with demons and viruses and even ghosts and that kind of stuff. Um, and kind of really make it more of, like, a, an X-Files type vibe with Men in Black um, versus, like, the big, like, you know, grandiose, like, you know, um, style of the movie, which was cool for the movie. It was great looking, it was creative, and it was awesome. Um, but I mean, like, you know, stuff like, um, even just the Men in Black headquarters, for instance, um, in the movies, um, especially in, uh, I think the second one, it was almost like, a, a big hub for, for aliens. Like, there was one scene in the very beginning, which it was almost like Grand Central Station for aliens. Um, I, I would kind of make it how, in the, in the comic, actually, 
they didn't even show the headquarters at all during the entire movie. It was actually more how, um, I don't know if you guys watched the Umbrella Academy on Netflix, where they made they had these two agents who uh, worked for this uh, future uh, time-traveling uh, agency, but they never showed the um, the agency until much later on in the series. They just kind of communicated through these tubes that would show up in random places. The same thing in the comic where, like, you know, it, for the most part, J and K would use, um, like, you know, shotguns and regular human weapons, but every once in a while there would they would these tube transports that would give them more higher-tech Weapons like you know, like the, like the guns you see in the uh, movie, like the noisy cricket, you know. <laughs> so I would go kind of that route, and um, I, I I wouldn't even introduce the uh, fr- the uh, headquarters in the first season. Maybe like in the season finale or even the uh, the second one, actually. As far as the characters go, I wouldn't go the um, the comic book route as far as J and K go, because we've seen like you know great concepts and great shows kind of falter because of a. Uh, unlikable characters um well i wouldn't go full like you know like jokey jokey how like some of the movies some of the later men in black movies are uh, the latest one is for sure um as well as some of the marvel movies go uh i would kind of like you know go for a nice interesting dynamic um uh, with the characters um as far as k goes i would kind of go like the jason statham route um make him like you know grizzled but not like too old um like a seasoned uh, veteran but also like you know is likable. Uh, I, I go more of like the Jason Statham like snatch route though, not not the uh, the more current like the Meg or Hobbs type uh, Jason Statham. As far as uh, Jay goes, um, I I really like um, uh, the Tessa Thompson, uh, the female Men in Black agent. Uh, so I would kind of keep going with that. Um, I would probably cast maybe somebody like I, I don't know how old she is, but uh, Sophia Lillis, I think her name is. She's in the uh, It movies. Uh, she plays Beverly. Um, I, I think I I think she for some reason I, I don't know that name's kind of like really coming out, and um I would I would like to see her play off Jason Statham I think it'd be nice to have a young a young girl, a young agent like you know female agent up against like you know an old like you know testosterone filled uh, like agent like you know like an alpha male type like Jason Statham um, again I don't know how old she is I know she plays young young kid in the movies but I think she's like she's gonna be at least nineteen years old something like that I, I think I, I want to say. Plus, like, you know, we, we need more ginger representation in Hollywood. You, you don't, there's not enough redheads besides uh, Conan O'Brien and, uh, and uh, Conan O'Brien. So I mentioned before it was kind of like, you know, like, like an X-Files type format. I, I would definitely go the X-Files type format as far as, like, you know, the supernatural and uh, extraterrestrial and that, that, that kind of investigation and stuff goes. Um, but I, as far as the dynamic goes, I would kind of make it, like, you know, a little more light, a little more like Bones. Um, like, like type like you know humor where like maybe not as jokey as uh, I, I forget his name David Bort uh, Angel or whatever his name is I wouldn't go as goofy as him but I would definitely like you know make it a, a, add a little levity to the uh, to the uh, the relationship between them um, but other than that I mean that's kind of like you know my pitch for Men in Black I, w- I would go the series format I always thought Men in Black would make a great uh, TV series I, I love the franchise I, I I think it has a lot of potential and really cool. And I don't want to see, like, you know, an unsuccessful movie kind of, like, let the movie, the, the franchise go to the wayside. Uh, I'd like to see it continue in some form. Hopefully this one, I think it'd be a good idea. And that's pretty much it. That's my idea. What do you guys think? Uh, put in the comments what you think. Like in uh, like the video if you think it's a good idea. Like if you don't think it's a good idea. And uh, anyway, let me know what you think. Right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.